fans, and welcome to another exciting edition of Cammy's Comic Corner. I'm your host as always, Cammy. So we got some picks of the weeks, we've got some news at the end, and we got the fast five as usual. Let's get right into it. First up, the pick of the week from DC Comics, we have Power Girl number 11, written by Jimmy Palmiotti and Justin Gray, and art by Amanda Connor. Now, uh, it took me a little bit to finally get invested in the Power Girl series, but of course, when the writer, the creative team is about to switch and change up, I'm just having a blast with this series. We have Power Girl this issue battling her best friend Tara. Why is she doing this? Because it's not really Tara, it's the ultra humanite's mind in Tara's body. Thanks to uh, Satana, she helped this whole surgical process happen. And now Tara's old mind is in the ultra humanite's old scarred body. So Power Girl is going up against Tara saying, hey, listen. Give her her body back, and you can have my body instead. Ultra Humanite goes, why would I want to do that? This girl is powerful. She can literally make the Earth move. And that's what she slash he's threatening to do, is just take all the tectonic plates and just, you know, make a whole big mess out of them. And so this battle's happening. Uh, Power Girl's getting pissed off because she's kind of restraining herself from going in for the kill because it's her best friend's body. But um, uh, eventually she gets... Tara up in space to make her pass out, takes her body down to a strata, and uh, after visiting Satana and saying, hey, you know, I'm going to blow off your arm, now where's my friend? Gets both those bodies, takes them to strata, which is uh, Tara's underground city, and this, the, the technology they have there, they're able to switch the brains and the correct bodies, and for the Ultra Humanite's body, they're able to reconstruct it. So now he has a new body, and he's thinking about doing, you know, good again. He has a second chance, Fire Girl has given him the second chance, he's not gonna waste it. Until she's out of the room, then he's like, I'm plotting her demise. And then Satana's also plotting her demise, as she gets a new cheetah arm attached to where her old arm used to go. Because of this, Tara and Power Girl are besties again, and the world has been saved. Great stuff. Amanda Connor's art on this was just so fantastic to look at. There should only be Amanda Connor art whenever a Power Girl is in any any story. If, you, if it's not an Amanda Connor, don't even bother putting it out. Now, onto the Fast Five. First up, from Marvel, we have Ultimate Comics Avengers number six. So we have Hawkeye, War Machine, the Hulk, Wasp all going up against Red Skull in Alaska. They're trying to get back that cosmic cube that he is just so happy he has. Well, unfortunately, he's just way too powerful. Even the Hulk can't do anything about it. And they lost War Machine. Coming full speed ahead in a supersonic jet, gets to Alaska, but not in time because Red Skull sees him coming, crashes the plane. But thanks to the coordinates that Hawkeye gives Captain America, he chucks the plane just impales Red Skull and makes the Cosmic Cube fall out of his hand. In the hospital, we find out that Red Skull didn't really want to destroy the world, he just wanted to reset it and have, you know, relive it in a life where Captain America, his father, was there for him in his childhood. It was kind of sad, but then you've got to put him out of his misery. But I don't think he's really dead still. And then at the end of the issue, we have Nick Fury wanting his job back at S.H.I.E.L.D., and he's going to be getting it one way or another. So it was a fantastically fun issue. Carlos Pacheco's art on this was just such a great combination with Mark Miller's story. Pick it up if you're not already. Next up from DC, we have The Brave and the Bold, number 33. Now, this is being written by J. Michael Straczynski, and ever since he's come on, you know, they've been really enjoyable stories. This one in particular, really good. Zatanna gets a vision in one of her dreams, and she rounds up Wonder Woman and Batgirl, Barbara Gordon Batgirl, and the, all of them decide, hey, we're having, you know, we're overworking ourselves, let's have a ladies' night out on the town. So they do, and she makes sure that Barbara is dancing throughout the entire night, and Barbara's just exhausted by the time this is all the festivities come to an end. She's never been dancing this long. And then at the end, the next night, we find out that it's when the killing joke takes place and when she gets paralyzed when the Joker shoots her. So the visions that Tana saw was this was going to happen and she just wanted her to remember, you know, that last night of her life, walking, being able to walk, one of the best she's ever had. And sure enough, she dreams it. It's still her favorite dream. So it was a very touching tale, great art. Pick it up. You don't even need any continuity uh, unless you don't know what the killing joke is. It's, it's good stuff. Next up from Marvel, we have Nova, number 36. 
Now, Nemorita's back, thanks to uh, Sphinx and the, and the Fault, but uh, Nova is heading back to Earth to Pegasus to find out what the deal is with the Fault, because they might know more about it than he, is, he has, you know, share resources. But when he gets there, Quasar is kind of acting a little different, has a new outfit on. It's all looking quite peculiar to him, and then he calls Quasar out on it. It's not really Quasar, it's some underground, like, monster from the Fault-esque universe called the Horror Scope, and it's horror and then scope, not... You'll get it if you see it spelled out. So anyway, it's him and uh, the Darkhawk versus this creature and the fake Quasar. Uh, Darkhawk gets badly wounded, and Quasar, evil Quasar, makes his escape, and now we got Richard Ryder going after him. It's a uh, great, great little one-shot. Uh, it's good to see Nova back in, you know, 616 continuity. I wasn't a fan of the past Sphinx storyline, but now that it's back to normal, I'm back to normal as well. Next up, from DC, we have Green Lantern number 53. Now, this is kind of an epilogue issue. We have some new gears uh, turning for upcoming storylines, featuring the first lantern slash being that was employed by the Guardians before the Lan Green Lanterns, before the Manhunters. So this guy's been around for a while. And it seems that he has chained up uh, Parallax. The, and it looks like he wants to collect them all, as it were. All the different ring-colored entities. Meanwhile, we have Carolyn Howell reconnecting after the, uh, you know, uh, the whole Blackest Night, and then Sinestro kind of crashes their little party and says that the White Lantern won't talk to him, it'll only talk to Hal Jordan. So now Hal has to go check that out. And then we have Guy Gardner trying to have a deal of some sort put together with Atrocitus. And now we're going to see this spin off into several different Green Lantern books. We've got Green Lantern Core, Brightest Day, Green Lantern, and a new one. Green Lantern Emerald Warriors, which looks great. Hey, if I get more cores in all the series, then I'm a happy guy. So, go check it out. It's, uh, it's vital that you do if you're a Green Lantern fan. And finally this week from Marvel, we have Guardians of the Galaxy number 25. Now, that whole being in the cocoon that the uh, Universal Church of Truth was, you know, growing... It's actually Thanos. They have reanimated his body, and now it's feral because his mind is under locks. And he's uh, a, quite the threat because the Guardians finally get back together with their other half of their team that they thought were dead on the Church's planet, but something's destroyed it. It turns out it's Thanos. All the psychics were trying to penetrate his mind. Couldn't because there were psychic blockers on it. Then finally, Star-Lord says, uh, uh, it's the uh, last, you know, it's the, it's the Hail Mary Pass, as it were, Got this broken cosmic cube from the future from a couple issues back. I thought there wasn't any juice left in it. Here, Thanos, you can have the rest of it. Sure enough, it frees his mind, and as soon as he gets freed and he gets his uh, shit kicked out of him, the psychics put him under lock, and now they have him all locked up. But for how much longer? It's Thanos. He's probably the one of the most powerful beings in the universe, and he's back? Holy shit. He's not going to be staying in jail or whatever containment you have planned for him for long. Great stuff. It's it's a it's it's a big storyline coming up. So it starts with this issue. Well, comic book fans, that does it this week for Kami's Comic Corner. If you want more Kami's Comic Corner goodness, head on over to www.kamiscomiccorner.com. From there, you can subscribe to us on RSS feed, YouTube, iTunes, wherever you want to get more Kami goodness. Also, if you like any of the kick-ass T-shirts that you usually see me wearing, head on over to www.deadlinegraphics.net and send Kelly an email. He customizes. All the t-shirts, he has the best of video games, comic books, or whatever you're looking for. He can make it for you. DeadlineGraphics.net. Go check it out. Also, big thanks to Rising Sun Creations at rsc-online.com. They specialize in the best of manga, U.S. comic books, and collectible toys imported straight from Japan. They got many of the titles I talked about available on their online web store, or website slash store. Go check them out at rsc-online.com today. Also... It's not in the RSS feed yet, but it is up on the YouTube. It's a special episode of Kick-Ass. I discuss the comic book and the movie and give my thoughts. That's very spoilerific. And also, if you like the audio stuff, 20 minutes of Doctor Who talk with my friend Sarah V for Vendetta. We talk about the first three new Matt Smith episodes. Uh, number two debuted yesterday in America. So if you're American and you haven't seen the third issue, uh, or third issue, third episode yet with the Daleks, Ignore that episode. But if you have seen it, go feel free to go listen to it. So that does it this week for Kami's Comic Corner. I have been your host, Cami. I need some coffee slash tea, something to make me feel better. So I leave you with this poem. Ow!